Last summer, I wrote a piece for Pocket Now in which I made the case that smartphones were getting so big they could serve, for some, as tablet replacements. Since then, devices have only swelled in size, exceeding even the made-up phablets category of phone-tablet crossovers. And two of the most noteworthy entrants to that new space are with us today. So let's bring them together and see how they compare. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is HTC One Max versus Sony Xperia Z Ultra. We've already given both of these devices the full review treatment here at Pocket Now, so if you want more detail on what it's like to own each of these phones, check those reviews out on our channel page. Also, be sure to follow Pocket Now at the online watering hole of your choice so you don't miss future reviews and comparisons. Normally, we kick off these head to head contests with a build discussion, but an equally striking difference in this case is found in software. So let's hit that department first. Both of these phones run a variation of Android Jelly Bean, but the third party UIs running atop those Android builds take entirely different paths to delivering a unique user experience. Both skins are very classy and modern in their understated grays and flat details, and they each offer fluid responsiveness with little to no lag, which we love. But the Z Ultra comes preloaded with various titles that plug into Sony's ecosystem, like the Sony Select App Hub and the branded offerings like the Walkman Media Player and PlayStation Mobile Gaming and so on. There's also something we love to see on a device as huge as this, a utility for taking advantage of all that display acreage. Sony's small apps use a windowed approach that we don't like quite as well as Samsung's split-screen multitasking, but they still come in handy from time to time. And the ability to download new ones or build your own, even, is a very nice touch. You're not going to find any of that on the One Max. HTC's device delivers a much more familiar experience if you're used to the original HTC One, or really any conventional Android phone. The company was interested only in porting the experience of the original One to the larger screen when it designed the Max. So you're really just dealing with HTC Sense 5.5 here. We like the nice touches like blink feed and the excellent gallery and UI experience, but the fact that there's almost nothing here taking advantage of the large display canvas is pretty underwhelming next to the Z Ultra, which is capable of comfortably accommodating quite a few more apps and widgets on its home screens. Let's talk some more about the physical size of those screens themselves as we pivot into hardware. While each is a 1080p panel, the 6.4-inch triluminous display on the Z Ultra dwarfs even the massive 5.9-inch SLCD3 on the HTC One Max. And importantly, it's just as gorgeous. In fact, since we updated the Z Ultra's software, it's tough to tell the difference in quality between these panels in a dark room. Blacks are a little deeper on the Z Ultra, while whites seem unnaturally warm next to the One Max. But these are tiny differences you'll only notice if you're looking for them. The Z Ultra has come a long way since we first reviewed it, and Sony is to be commended for the software tweaks that made that possible. Both screens are excellent. The casings surrounding those displays, though, aren't even in the same neighborhood. The One Max may have smartphone proportions, but it's a tank-like beast. An aluminum slab measuring 10.3 millimeters thick and resembling the One Mini with its added reliance on plastic. On the other side, the Z Ultra more closely resembles its tablet counterpart than any of Sony's smartphones, with a wider body, squared off corners, and a thickness of only 6.5 millimeters. The comparative fragility of the glass, which does scratch easily, is offset by the Z Ultra's water and dust resistance. Impressive ruggedness for a device so slim. Large as it is in the hand, the Z Ultra is also aesthetically stunning, next to the One Max's more conventional bigness. Looking beneath the casings reveals more evidence of the Z Ultra's bolder ambitions. Remember, HTC was just going for a bigger phone with the One Max, and as such, it's got a Snapdragon 600 aboard. Powerful, to be sure, but not as powerful as the Z Ultra's Snapdragon 800. Each offers expandable storage via microSD and a non-removable battery, though, with the One Max's coming in slightly larger than Sony's. And elsewhere, the feature load is comparable. 
unless you want to change your TV channels with your phone or awkwardly unlock your phone with a fingertip, in which case you need to stick with the One Max. The added boost of the Snapdragon 800 with its more powerful GPU means some high-intensity games will function more smoothly on the Z Ultra, but neither of these phones are likely to disappoint most users in that arena. It's in areas like acoustics where the Z Ultra finally starts to lose some ground, its lone speaker very quiet and tinny up against the hurricane onslaught of HTC boom sound. That translates to the voice experience as well, with callers telling us the Sony device made us sound significantly more muddled than the One Max. Also muddled? The camera situation. We hate to say it, but choosing which camera we like between these devices is definitely a lesser of two evils situation. The 4 megapixel HTC camera is lower in resolution than the 8 megapixel Exmor RS sensor on the Sony, but it tends to overcorrect for exposure issues when using tap to focus much as the Sony camera overcorrects in terms of white balance, rendering everything a little cooler than it should be. Sometimes that's a good thing, the HTC images seeming a little warmer than necessary next to the starker Sony shots, but get these things into a low light situation and the One Max shines next to the Z Ultra's overprocessed slop. But then go ahead and choose another low light situation in different conditions and watch those results get flipped on their head. Inconsistency seems to be the name of the game when comparing these shooters. The only thing we're sure of is that neither would be our first choice for a night or even a day out on the town. Fortunately, we'd probably have plenty of juice for test shots on each, though the battery endurance between these devices is comparable and almost uniformly excellent. To tie a bow on it, we're left with the notion that how you feel about these products depends mainly on whether you're looking for an oversized phone or an undersized tablet. If it's the former, you're almost certainly going to prefer the One Max with its acoustic superiority, greater simplicity, and slightly better one-handed usability. If, on the other hand, you're looking for a tablet that's been shrunken down to pocketable size, barely, look no further than the Z Ultra. Its software utility, resistance to the elements, and beautiful industrial design are a potent combination that makes it the more capable device overall, a fact that makes looking ridiculous while talking on it more than worth it, in our view. <laughs>